So this video is for those of you that are unable to run the FET simulation on your computer. What this video will do is it will go through the assignment and we will manipulate the simulation according to what the question is asking. We will not be providing the answer. It is up to you to pause the video and find the information on this page and then answer the question accordingly. So for the first question under exploration, the simulation starts with a block of wood floating in a tank of water. This is the object, the block of wood is floating in this tank of water. Lift that block of wood out and set it on the side. What is the volume of the block of wood? Hint, look at the info in the top left corner. Question two. What is the volume of the water inside the tank with nothing else in it? This is the tank of water with nothing else in it. What is the volume? Question three. Drop the block of wood back in the tank. Does the volume of the water match the volume of the block? Question four, to get the volume of the block of wood, you need to use the method of water displacement, which means all the block must be underwater. What do you need to do to get the total volume of the block of wood inside the tank? So on the next page, it is going to be the custom section. For this section, collect the necessary information for each item. So the first material will be styrofoam. If I click on this drop down menu, I am given all of the different materials we will be using. The first one is styrofoam. So it is asking me to identify the mass in kilograms of the block of styrofoam. It is asking us what is the initial volume of water when the styrofoam is not in the tank. It is asking us what is the final volume of water when the styrofoam is in the tank. It is also asking what is the volume of material. Now these three volumes should be measured in liters. Then we are calculating the ratio in kilograms per liter of this item. What we need to do here is we need to divide the mass in kilograms by the volume of the material in liters, and then write down that the answer inside that cell. The final question is asking if the object floats. Now, one thing to think about while you're answering this is if you have the initial volume of water, which is in the tank, and then you have the final volume of water once the object is in it, does the calculated volume of water, that is the volume that has changed once the object has been added, is that the same as the volume of the material that you get from the information in the top left corner? Material two is the wood. So we need the mass of the object, the volume of the tank with nothing in it, the volume of the tank with the object in it, the volume of the material, the calculated ratio, which is the kilograms of the item over the volume of the item. And then finally, does it float? We're going to get the same information for the ice. Ice. What is the mass? What is the volume with nothing in it? What is the volume when we place the ice in? What is the volume of the material itself? What is the calculated ratio in kilograms per liter? And does it float? 
for the brick, what is the mass of the brick? What is the initial volume of water? What is the final volume of water? What is the volume of material? What is the calculated ratio in kilograms per liter? And does it float? The last material for this custom section will be the aluminum. What is the mass of aluminum? What is the initial volume of water? What is the final volume of water? What is the volume of material? What is the calculated ratio in kilograms per liter? And does it float? So for the next two sections, complete the data tables and then answer the questions below. So the reminder is saying you need to change the section in the top right corner of the simulation. So for the same mass, I'm going to click on the same mass. And we are given four objects with the same mass. So what is it is asking is for you to calculate the mass of each of these four objects. Now note, there is no information in the top left corner. So you need to be able to identify the mass by looking at the mass of the objects, and then to determine the volume of material in liters. We will be using the volume displacement. So what that means is we have the initial volume, and then the volume after we have added an object. And you need to calculate how much additional volume that that object makes up, and then that is the volume of material. So for this one, you have 105.00 liters with the object. Without the object, it's 100.00 liters. How much volume has been added? And that is the volume of material. Once you have the mass of the object and the volume of the material, you need to calculate the density in the same way as you did for the custom section which will be reported in kilograms per liter. So that's the mass over the volume. And then finally, does this object float? So for the yellow object, I'm going to lift it up, place it inside the container. What is the mass of the object? Now, this item has not been completely submerged which for our displacement, according to page one, question four, we need to submerge this. I am going to place this underwater so that way you can calculate the volume once this has been completely submerged. Once you have the mass and volume of the yellow material, you need to calculate the density in kilograms per liter and then write down, does it float if it is not held underwater? For the green material, you need the mass in kilograms, the volume once it has been added into the tank of water, the density, and does it float. And the final material you need for this table will be the red. You need the mass, the volume of the material, the density, and does it float. The next table will be for the same volume. We have four materials, the blue, yellow, green, and red materials. For each of these, you need to determine the mass in kilograms, the volume of the material, you need to calculate the density, and then you need to determine, does it float? I'm going to pick up the blue material drop it in the water. Now you should be able to determine the mass, the volume of material, the density, and whether or not it floated.
for the yellow material, I'm going to place it in the water. You need to calculate the mass, volume of material, density, and whether or not it floated. The green material will now be added. So for this one, in order to determine the volume of material, we need the volume of the original tank without anything added, and then we need to measure via displacement. I'm going to hold this cube underwater, and then you need to calculate the volume of the container. Once you have the mass, the volume of material, you can calculate the density and determine whether or not it is floating. And then finally, the red object. I'm going to hold it underwater so that way it can be measured via displacement. And now you should be able to determine the mass, the volume, the density, and whether or not it is floating. Now that you have this information, you should be able to answer the next three questions on that page. You should also be able to answer the particle diagrams on the next page. You can reference the tables if you need to reference any data you had collected in this lab to justify any of your answers. This justification is going to be a great resource when you're using the explanation for your particle diagrams to explain what is occurring with the particles inside each of these shapes. Now, the last part we will be working with for this simulation will be the mystery section, which will be the fifth page in the density lab. So I'm going to click on this. It gives us five different materials, A, B, C, D, and E. What you need to do for this section is to determine the mass of each object, the volume, the density, whether or not it floats, and then finally, after you have calculated and determined all four of those categories, you can identify it. There is another table on that page that gives you what a material is. It gives you aluminum, brass, gold, cork, styrofoam, magnesium, charcoal, and zinc, as well as the densities for each of those materials. You need to identify what materials A, B, C, D, and E are based off of those densities provided in the next table. We're going to start off by measuring A. I'm going to place it on this balance on the left it's zero kilograms when nothing is on it. 0, 0.00 kilograms. The object has now been masked. When it's set in the water, you can measure the volume via displacement. You can now calculate the density and whether or not it is floating. Object B. The object has been masked. The object can now be measured via displacement. And when I let go of it, you can see if the object is floating or not. Object C. The object has been masked. And you can now measure the volume via displacement. When I let go of it, you should be able to see whether or not it floats. Object D. The object has now been masked. You can measure the volume via displacement, and when I let go, you can see if the object floats or not.
object E. The object has been masked. You can now measure the volume via displacement. And when I let go, you can see if the object floats. You should now have the information necessary to complete all of the data tables within the density lab. You can use that information to answer the questions and complete the particle diagrams for the lab.